Well, as Josh said, my name is Travis Humphries. I'm a worldwide product manager on his and Jeff's team. I'm responsible for our Z4 and Z6 platforms. And before I get into some of the details of uh, new features, etc., for the Z4, I kind of want to give a baseline uh, positioning of what this, what uh, markets this product is actually intended for. So the Z420 really hits a sweet spot in terms of being the ideal balance of price and performance in the workstation market. And uh, this is traditionally the case for our Z series, Z4 series uh, product. And that's actually what makes the, the single most successful workstation platform that we ship. This, uh, this single platform ships more than any of the other platforms that we have, either mobile or desktop. And uh, so as, as such, it really has a broad reach in terms of customer segments that it is attractive to. Ideally, the Z440 is going to be positioned to uh, be best taken advantage of by uh, customers in the product development architecture segment. It's going to have incredible single-threaded application performance, but also the with high-performance eight-core processor. Since this platform more, will scale up to a single eight-core processor, it will be more scalable for entry to mid-range media entertainment customers as well. And as you'll see, as I kind of cover the the features of the Z440, there's also a lot of uh, features that make it very attractive to what we call our OEM market. And you heard uh, you heard allusions to that earlier. These are customers who take our systems, integrate them into a very uh, mission critical, expensive, complicated solution of their own, and ship it out. These are like your CAT scan machines, uh, for example. And this this platform specifically is very attractive to that market because of things like long life cycle and other features that I'll talk about. So I'll go ahead and get started and start with the front of the system on the Z440. So uh, one big change gen to gen is the updated industrial design. The, and a big feature of that is integrated front and back handles 100% of the time. This was an option to have a front handle on the previous generation. We've made a big improvement with this generation. And in fact, it's a, it's a brand new chassis as well. And coupled with that, the actual width dimension in this orientation is less than seven inches. And that, that may seem arbitrary to some of you, but to some of our customers, namely those OEM customers that I talked about before, uh, they may be racking this solution. So with something that goes over four rack units or seven inches, they're not gonna be able to maximize their rack space. But also they have very specific dimensions that they need to fit into in that furniture and in those solutions that I talked about. And this solution being narrower and actually half an inch shorter than the previous generation really drives to an ideal size for that market. Looking at the front of the system in terms of the ID and features, we still have two flexible five and a quarter inch drive base. Customers will use this for front access storage, uh, additional optical, you know, media card readers, things like that. We want to give as much flexibility as possible with the front access five and, a half, five and a quarter inch base. The primary optical drive bay, which you, may be hard for some of the people in the back to see, is actually this nine and a half millimeter slim optical bay just beneath the five and a quarter inch. And that's really driven by the industry converging on this nine, nine and a half millimeter form factor for optical. And it also has enabled us to improve the acoustics generation gen to gen. And I'll talk a little bit about that when we get inside of the system. Looking at the front I.O. area, we have a new consistent uh, ID with our mobile workstation in terms of the power button and, and the white LED behind that. And then the front I.O., we also have four USB 3 ports in this generation and a headset and microphone port. I want to circle back to the USB ports for a second because you heard Josh mention this use case of battery charging already with the mobile workstations. We also have a battery charging port on all of the desktop workstations as well in this generation, which is the top USB 3 port. And that's really driven by this, this move. I mean, if you look around the room right here, everybody's got a laptop and a smartphone out. Everybody wants to have their tablet at their desk. And in fact, in many cases, users are using that as a companion device to even work on the same application, which is a really interesting workflow. And what this enables is if there's a premium for power outlets in the 
in the workspace as there you know sometimes is. Uh, this will enable 1.5 amps of charging either an on or off, basically meeting uh, that USB battery charging spec 1.2 on that port. Okay. Looking at the back of the system, you get a better view of the rear handle solution here at the top. This is a much better grip than uh, than the previous generation. You can you know get a regular man-sized hand in, in here and without you know hurting your fingers at all. Uh, and and that's a huge benefit for users who move systems around or easy to deploy or easy to unbox. It's just a major benefit. We introduced the front and rear handles on the Z6 and Z8 all the way back in 2009, and now they're cascading into this class of platform as well. Uh, you heard me mention rackability as a key aspect for some customers, and it may be not a majority of customers, but customers who care about their system being in a rack, every little goodness that we can give them and advantage that we have is is good for them and it really provides a better solution for them and, and an example of that in addition to the rack width that I talked about earlier is we actually have a rear power button if you see this little black dot here this is a rear power button and LED which enables users who are in a rack environment to cycle their power without having to walk all the way back around to the front of their system every time they need to do something at the rear of the system so it's a big advantage in that use case. Looking at the rear I.O. Uh, and something, uh, some, a theme that you'll see throughout this discussion is, uh, you know, sometimes being the best selling and the, the highest volume is a blessing and a curse. And one of the maybe curses is that we have to support many legacy technologies to support uh, customers who've been buying workstations for many, many years and buying our workstations. And, and one of those legacy technologies that we continue to support is PS2. So PS2 is used for keyboard and mouse, or KVM workflows, for example. And then even some customers are so strict about <coughs> USB standards that they insist on having PS2 peripherals for security reasons, and they'll actually epoxy in all of the USB ports. To I mean, I'm talking three-letter acronym government entities here that that are really insistent on maximum security and, and no data leaving the system at all. And so that's why we continue to support legacy technologies like PS2. And looking at the actual rear I.O., uh, you can see a lot of USB ports, two USB 2 ports, four USB 3 ports. Uh, you have a single gigabit Ethernet LAN supporting Intel vPro technology. And then audio in and audio out as well for the audio. Okay, well, let's talk about the heart and soul of the Z4. Just a, from a design perspective, it's a pretty clean chassis design, and we've made some changes in, here in the front uh, hard drive cage area to really enable, even though it's a smaller chassis than the previous generation, it's much more powerful and it actually provides measurably better acoustics performance gen to gen. So it's not only more par powerful, smaller, it's also quieter. And that's because of some of the choices we made in, in how we lay out the internals. Uh, one, one of the examples that's not shown here is a memory cooler that fits over the memory. This is for your benefit so you can actually see the dim slots. But uh, that's another example of how we actively cool the solution, let all the fans run slower and really bring that whisper quiet acoustics that they talked about earlier. Looking at the hard drive area, again you see your, your toolless access to the five and a quarter inch drive bays. You have two three and a half inch drive bays as well. Moving back to the memory, the, the memory in this generation is still four channel memory similar to the previous gen, so not a big change there. But the big change in memory is actually going from DDR3 to DDR4 uh, DRAM, which is a brand new memory technology. This server-based architecture, which you'll see coming in the market uh, from us and others, is, are some of the first platforms in the industry that will support this DDR4 technology. It's intended to be more power efficient, and it also enables, in, in this case, better performance in the Z440. Uh, this, the memory architecture is also registered memory only, 
And so that, that also uh, requires that, that memory cooler that I talked about earlier. Now in terms of actual capacity and sort of scale, scaling and flexibility of the Z4 platform, the Z440 will actually have double the maximum memory, so up to 128 gigabytes of system memory available in this sort of what you might call an entry performance class of system, which is really huge. But as a, you know, as the workflows get more and more complex, you heard you heard them talking about you know just how much data gets crunched and generated on a day-to-day -day basis. Those big memory footprints are becoming more and more important. Now the core architecture difference in this generation obviously is with the processors and chipsets. So these processors, you heard Josh mention, these are Intel Haswell E5 based processors. The Z440 will support E5 1600 V3 and 2600, certain 2600 V3 processors. Uh, I've capped this platform at eight processor cores. We don't typically see in this space a need to go beyond that. But, uh, you know, what this means is a brand new microarchitecture in the processor, enabling better performance in some applications, and even in some cases, you heard Josh mention more cores and higher frequency as well. Uh, what you might notice is this big honk and metal thing here in the middle, and this is actually uh, the heat sink for the processor. And one of the innovations in this generation is to, uh, and then again in that acoustics vein, is to provide a thermal solution for the processor that is actually equal to or better than our previous generation liquid cooling solution for our processor. So very high performance standard air cooling solution in this generation. And then from the chipset, so the new Intel C610 series Wellsburg chipset, uh, that enables better I.O. So it's got integrated USB 3, which is why you have so many more USB 3 ports in this generation. And also much better storage layout. You have many more SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. And I don't, I don't know if that, that's kind of like tech speak. Basically, uh, 6 gigabit per second SATA ports, the number, so all of the SATA ports in the Z440 and the other platforms will be 6 gigabit per second. And basically, you heard the discussion about removing bottlenecks. In previous gen, you had a limited number of 6 gigabit per second SATA ports. And your traditional uh, spinning disk media is not going to take advantage of that, even probably the 3 gigabit per second old standard. But as we see more and more users sort of converge on and really ramp up into the SSD world, as two and a half inch SATA SSD prices come down and down and become more affordable, uh, you'll see you know, bigger and bigger SSD based configurations. And that's where that SATA bottleneck really comes into play very quickly for workstation class users. And essentially we've removed that in this generation of workstation. Okay. Looking at the PCI Express slots in the system, uh, essentially very similar gen to gen. Uh, we have three Gen 3 PCI Express slots, two of which are by 16 and one by 8. And these, all of these Gen 3 slots are routed directly to the processor. Uh, so that's the fastest possible data transfer with those PCI Express slots. In addition, you also have two uh, PCI Express Gen 2 slots as well, by 1 and a by 4 slot in the Z440. And then the sixth, the very bottom slot in the Z440, is actually a legacy PCI slot, so 32-bit, 33 megahertz. And you're thinking, oh gosh, that's, I mean, that's really old technology. What is the point? And it kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier with being both a blessing and a curse of being such a successful platform and having such a good, solid following in these business-critical environments. We have these OEM customers who have essentially designed an, a whole ecosystem around, say, one particular PCI card to get one from one vendor that they manufactured themselves, and they have a whole software ecosystem built around that. And what they want with that investment on their side is the longest term support from vendors like HP that they can get. And so that's what we deliver with bringing these legacy technologies. So in summary, the Z440 is, is again, really a, a perfect balance of price and performance for uh, mainstream workstation users and product development, architecture, uh, and OEM market. And the big takeaways that I want to you know, leave you with with the Z440 are it's a brand new chassis, 
it's uh, you know really the right size for these key markets that uh, that are that we service with this platform. And it, the, it's huge in terms of the industrial design updates as well. So that's key takeaway number one. Number two is you, what we're really making available here is all of the latest and greatest workstation technologies. So you're talking about improvements in processor technology, memory technology, storage layout, you heard me mention, I.O., uh, and graphics as well. So this is, this is a sort of a unique event where all of these technologies come converged and the whole workstation industry gets to take a step change forward in terms of performance. So with that, I'll move on and tell you a little bit about the V6.